Welcome back class. And today in section two of the unit, we're gonna concentrate on the cell cycle itself. The actual life cycle of the cell. Now when people study the cell cycle, a lot of times they concentrate primarily on mitosis. But mitosis is only a small part of the entire life cycle of a cell. The cell cycle is far more complex. And in fact, mitosis is only maybe about 10% or so of actually the life cycle of the cell. The bulk of the cell cycle is spent during a process called interphase. Look at how much that time. 90% of the time is spent during interphase. So we've got to spend some time talking about interphase as well. It's often neglected. Interphase has its own actual stages to it. Interphase is the part of the life cycle of the cell where it, it lives its normal life. It's growing, creating the organelles, that kind of stuff. But then, interphase also involves the preparation for cellular division. Why it moves into that part, we'll be talking about in the last section of the unit. Interphase has three different stages. G1, and the G stand for gap. Gap one, this is the primary growth phase of the cell. When the cell has already divided, and now it's living on its own, if you can imagine. Uh, it has all the genetic information it needs. Uh, it's producing a new organelles, so it can take care of all the business of being a cell. But then eventually some chemical, a protein, will trigger the cell to let it know it's getting ready to divide. Perhaps the cell is getting too big. Maybe it's a skin cell and there was a cut and it's got to kick into production of new cells, whatever the case may be. At that particular point, the cell will move into the S phase, also known as synthesis. And of course, synthesis, you know, the scientific term means to make something. And what's being made during synthesis? Another set of chromosomes. This is the stage where the chromosomes replicate. And then the G2 phase, or gap two, is when the cell gets serious about getting ready for cellular division. At this particular point, enzymes and other types of proteins that are necessary for cell division to take place kick into production. From interphase, the cell will then move into the mitotic stage, mitosis, where division will take place. Uh, and as I said, again, that's only a small part of the cell cycle, but it does have its own stages. And then the cell cycle will culminate with cytokinesis, the actual division of the cytoplasm to prepare two new daughter cells. So let's look again at interphase a little bit. This is a great diagram here that talks about the entire cell cycle, but you can see interphase takes up almost the entire part of the pie here. That's a huge chunk of the life cycle of the cell. Again, you can see the G1 phase where the cell is growing, the S phase where DNA replication takes place, and then the G2 phase where the cell gets ready for cellular division. That's a big part of the cell's life cycle. Can't emphasize it enough. Don't forget about interphase when you're studying. Then we move into the M phase, which is where mitosis takes place. And remember, mitosis has its own stages, which can be memorized with this very terrible acronym, PMAT. Maybe you learned this already in school. P standing for prophase, M for metaphase, A for anaphase, and T for telophase. At this particular point, the cells are ready to finally tear apart and create the two new daughter cells. That last part where the cytoplasm actually tears apart is called cytokinesis. And then the process begins again with interphase with the two new identical daughter cells. Make sure you study this diagram. I'm going to put some emphasis on it. This is a great diagram to help you visualize this process in your mind and help you remember it. Now let's go through the stages. So now let's move on into the actual process of mitosis, the division of the nucleus. Okay. And we'll begin first with prophase, which is the first stage of mitosis. That's the P and PMAT. And since we're talking about eukaryotic cells here, um, we're talking about the nucleus. And prophase is about getting the nucleus ready for division. So what's going to have to happen? The nucleolus will have to disappear. We talked about that, what that nucleolus is, remember, earlier in the year. The chromosomes will condense together and coil up. Uh, you'll see now you, they have the traditional look of what you think of with a chromosome with the pairs of sister chromatids, one on each side. Centrioles will uh, develop and move to opposite poles during prophase. There's your centrioles there. Those are your poles. Uh, spindle fibers will begin to form. That's these structures here, which will be so necessary later for cellular division. And then the nuclear membrane will start to dissolve and disintegrate so that the genetic material can, of course, get out. Otherwise, it wouldn't fit through the little tiny pores. And don't worry, new nuclei are going to form later. From prophase, we'll move into the next phase, which is metaphase. And meta, you can use to remember 
Uh, God starts with the M there, like in Pima at the M. M also is the beginning of the word middle. And in metaphase, that's about the chromosomes lining up in the middle of the cell, or what's called the equator, or sometimes referred to it as the equatorial plate. And that's where the chromosomes will line up in a special way that their chromosomes will line up on the spindle fibers uh, attached at the centromeres. And this is beginning the preparation for the actual tearing apart. So you'll notice that it's orientating itself. So you have the sister chromatids, one on each side. So what's going to happen is now those chromosomes are going to start to tear apart to move to the new daughter cells that are developing. So <clears throat> one chromatid will go to one side, another chromatid will go to the other side. And remember, there's actually double the amount of genetic information right now. So what's going to happen is it's going to be divided in half so that one side of the cell will get some and the other side of the cell will get some. And each cell will get the exact same amount or will end up with the exact same amount as the parent cells have, or the parent cell, excuse me. This is anaphase. That's the A stage in PMAT. In this particular stage now, the chromatids have torn apart at the centromere. They've separated and now they're moving to the new two daughter cells. Now, each daughter cell has the same amount of genetic material as the parent cell had. Remember, way back in interphase, the genetic material was copied or doubled so that there would be enough so that each daughter cell would have the exact amount of identical information that the parent had. And this is an actual graphic. You can see here in a plant cell what it looks like. And you can see how readily the genetic information takes that dye. You can see that purplish pink color there. That's the genetic information stretching apart during anaphase. And you can even still see, if you look carefully, the spindle fibers in this actual image here. So anaphase is about the genetic material tearing in half at the centromeres and dividing. So we're left with basically one stage, which can almost is running concurrently. The cell may actually start to do this at the same time, um, which is telophase. Telophase, the cells start to stretch apart. You're going to start getting new nuclei here forming, as you can see here, with the new genetic information. You can also see as the cells are starting to stretch and begin to prep prepare for tearing, um, what's called um, the cleavage furrow. That's the indentation point where it's pinching, the cleavage furrow. You can see that on HI because the cytoplasm is stretching. Uh, the membrane is stretching. And so the cell is getting ready to tear in half. Imagine if you had like some old Play-Doh and you stretched it and eventually it tears. That's what happens here. A little different in a plant cell, though. Plant cells can't really stretch that much, can they? Because they have what? A cell wall. So what happens in the case of a plant cell is a cell plate will develop between the two forming cells. This is one cell and that's the other. That's terrible. So they, that cell plate will grow down and create a new barrier between those two daughter cells. So that's telophase. And then telophase will move into cytokinesis, the actual point where the t cells literally separate apart. And now you have two daughter cells, each with the same genetic information. Uh, basically, they each have half of what was the organelles from the parent. And those organelles will divide and reproduce and produce no organelles. And you have a fully functioning daughter cell that basically, for all intents and purposes, is identical to the parent. And uh, so the process will begin again. And which stage will you move into now? Interphase again. Here's a little joke for you, mitosis. This is the process of division in Mike from Monsters, Inc. In the last section, we'll talk about the cell cycle and how it's controlled and regulated. This movement from one stage to the other is not magical. Um, there are actually chemical triggers that actually move the cell from one place to the other. And that's how we'll finish out the unit.